Good afternoon, everyone. It's Steve Woods here, and I'm joined by Simon Holden for the live reaction show. Apologies, we're a few minutes late. There were some technical issues, but we've got them sorted now. Simon, how's things with you? Well, it was all right until about 10 minutes ago, Steve. My hair was black then, but the, oh, more pressure than the, like, going out in the last two balls. It's all grass there. But we made it, mate. The last time you were on the show, there was a 45 to 1 winner that you gave oh. out. And that's why there's been a lot of talk before. And we won't have to the same again. But, uh, well, I, I also, if you remember, I'm not one to sort of big myself up, but we, we called that Man City second half right as well, didn't we? The old 3 uh, 1. We had a good, score. yeah, it was. I mean, you know, two, everybody yeah. piled in. Yeah, the last two reaction shows have been really good, actually, for suggestions, content. Neil was brilliant last week. Thank you very much, everyone, for the great comments we've had about that. And um, it was a new record for viewing figures for the reaction show as well. So, uh, again, thanks for anyone who's been uh, part of it. But uh, welcome in anyone who's live as well. Alex, nice to see you. Um, Stuart says... I enjoy the insights, insights, but can't seem to understand some of the leans. They are always wrong. Not sure about that, Stuart. I think um, the last couple of weeks it's been pretty on, on part on, on well, some good results really. Um, depending, I don't know if you mean the live reaction show, the actual some of the other shows or not. But uh, anyway, yeah. So we're going to talk about the some live in play suggestions yeah. now. We've got FA Cup. Uh, we've got some matches across Europe. Then we're going to talk a bit about the golf, the Players Championship, because you're on the show, Simon. And you are a big golf expert. So we're going to go into a bit of that. Maybe a little bit of US Masters talk as well, because that's the first major next uh, week. After that, international break is coming up. I've got a couple of betting mentality things that I want to ask you. And also how we approach that international break. Maybe look at a few outrights yeah. as well. But right, half time it is in the big FA Cup match. Man United 1, Liverpool 2. I was going to come in with a big, big suggestion, yeah. in fact, of, a, of an overs at half time, right? Because Man United led for a long point, a large proportion of that first half, played really well. Liverpool were going for it. They were leaving gaps at the back. Then Liverpool scored two goals right on half time. So now we've got a situation where Liverpool are minus 385 money line. Tie is plus 440, which I think looks quite big. This might go all the way to extra time. Man United 10 to 1 to win. And the goal line is now knocking on the door of the Asian line of five. Um, which is really big, actually. Yeah, over five Asian goals at plus 107. Where would your leans be now? I'm, I must admit, I'm really annoyed about those two Liverpool goals. Well, uh, this is just completely... but Because uh, I've written down, if it stays 1-0, I'd be quite interested in Liverpool seeing what price they are. But this has mm -hmm. now gone so far to them, at minus uh, 385, that it's been a bit of a mad game. I mean, this is as good as I've seen Manchester United play all year. If they played with this intensity... They would be in, in in nowhere near the trouble that they're in, uh, in or in the mediocrity they're in. But I I, I quite like the tie plus four forty. There has been so many good chances uh, that I, I I think be, that I'm sure that this is the end of their season really if they uh, yeah they bomb out here in the second half. And Old Trafford has been rocking. Uh, it's just two sucker punches from Liverpool right at the end and and. Um, a disallowed goal. I mean, but United had chances to go two, two up and make this two, uh, two all. So I, I'm gonna, yeah, I would suggest a little, a little lean on the old uh, tie here at plus four forty. I think there's a bit of value in that, Steve. I am actually, I agree. I, I did think that plus four forty on the tie with Bet Rivers looked a big price. The goal line of five doesn't actually interest me as much because. You got to cover that two order. If it went two all, you might even get a situation where both teams actually get a little bit not nervous, but you you, you sort of uh, the pressure gets on a bit more. No one wants to lose. No, um, so yeah. yeah, so I don't think you can touch the goal line right now. Interesting, Manchester United to win the second half is. Uh, I'm going to get you this Asian line now, Man United. Um, ooh, God, I mean, they're actually, they're actually a plus goal line. Man United in this plus plus one oh seven on the plus not point two five Asian. So if, if it actually ended two one or if they lost by one goal, you would actually cash there. That the way they played the first half, I know they're a tough the tough side to predict this season, but that looks a big price. Yeah, I mean uh the total goals uh under four point five plus one four five. I don't think that's a bad play. 
Mm, I think we've got to wait and see how this second half starts because those two goals right on half-time really did change. Oh, it's, it's good on everything, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what else is on? We've got. I mean, I've actually got the Leeds match on TV at the minute. As you know, I'm a Leeds fan. It's been a close one against Millwall. Maybe should have had a few more goals. Uh, so, know whether I could advise anything with 28 minutes to go. Uh, Ren a one 0 up against Marseille. Uh, Marseille probably, probably maybe edged this game actually. Marseille, but for, find themselves behind one of James. Well, I bet Marseille. Well, it's one of James Eastham's picks. Yeah. But Ren on the draw, no bet. So you went against our French expert, uh, Simon. Well, I, I, I thought Marseille, just because I knew it was coming on and we'd be probably looking at that. I have been in cracking form lately, or that's how it they looked, have. but you see. Yeah. yeah, they have been in good form. I should have yeah. listened to the men that know. Well, let's see if there's a long way to go. Marseille, to be honest, have had well, a few more opportunities, I think you could say. But uh, 31 minutes gone, it's 1-0 there. Let's wait and see what it is at half time. There's a match that has really frustrated me live in running here, Villarreal against uh, Valencia. I took the over two and a half pre-game. Actually, 3.25 was my hot dog selection of the week. And I've got Vill Villarreal missed a penalty in about the 35th minute. We would have really opened the game up. They have now scored in the second half, but and it has. I mean, Valencia are going for it now. But I, I just, whenever there's been a missed penalty in a game, Simon, I'm reluctant to get involved because it's just inevitable. It probably might cost you. You know, I'm coming from. Do you ever get that feeling when there's a miss penalty? Oh, it changes dynamics. Yeah, yeah. And also, you, you get that sinking feeling more than any other feeling in betting, don't you, with a, with a penalty miss? <laughs> but it's not 76, like yeah. 76% yeah. conversion rate is penalties. I mean, I, look, I mean, it comes around and goes around because I had a really big miss penalty in my favour last night in Spain with the Bill Bow game. So I suppose I can't moan too much. But the goal line now. In running for Valencia against Villarreal is over 1.75 at minus 141. I don't know whether I just I always get I get bad feelings about about these sort of things, you know. So I, I'm yeah, just we always alone. forget, don't we? As 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 betters as gamblers, we always forget when these things go in our favour, don't we? Do <laughs> Doesn't happen very course, often. That's why. Yeah, exactly. But it's nothing to do with us, is it? It's just purely a, 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 a you know they don't know. That you're on, you've got to try and sort of face these triumphs and disasters both the same. And remember that it's like when you bet a horse and it falls at the last fence. You so know, if I have to take something here, actually, Valencia draw no bet from a one nil game state losing uh, game state at plus one twenty. They look the most likely side to actually get the next goal. Um, it would only be a small bet because you never know here. Uh, but uh, that, that that looks a little bit um, bit bit of value actually, considering that they need to chase the game. A couple of uh, comments here, Shane. Uh, we'll, I'll come to you in a minute, Shane, but welcome in. Rofo Silver has asked me, curious to see why I stopped tipping Augsburg. They've continued to cover the overs. Just because I think there's been better other options that have appealed to me more, really. They let me down last week, of course, Rofo. Uh, and when a team lets me down, they've, got, they've kind of got to do a, a bit more to get back in my good books. Um, but I, don't, I, I thought they played poorly yesterday until the red card for, I think it was Werder Bremen, wasn't it? So I'm not sure. And all Augsburg are in that mid-table position where, we, you know, we use that term teams on the beach, don't we, a little bit. But oh, Valencia should have equalised, bloody hell. I think there might be another goal soon in this game, actually, in um, in the Villarreal match. Straight at the goalkeeper in the corner. Anywhere else, it's in the back of the, back of the net. But... Uh, yeah, Shane's asked here, during this quiet period, has Simon had any more thoughts about the Masters or the next presidential uh, election in the USA? We'll come to that in a minute. Um, Shane also asked about the outrights for Champions League and Europa League. We might have time for that later, but golf is now on the agenda. And um, Simon, you're on here. We've got yeah, the Players' I've, Championship. I've got, yeah, yeah. In a week, yeah. where Mike Tyson, the great, the baddest man on the planet, is back in the news making a comeback. I was reminded when you put any strategy together that he had a great saying, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> Let's hope we don't get punched in the mouth tonight. Um, right. This is a very interesting, uh, every last round of the players is interesting, but we've got um, Wyndham Clark in second and Xander Schauffele leading. A lot of the uh, previews I'm reading kind of think this could be a, a duel in the sun type thing with the last group, but I'm not so sure. A couple of weeks ago, Xander Schauffele was involved in the last two ball with Patrick Cantlay. They both, I think, set each other off. 
uh, and were poor. And, and Zande in the last couple of years has missed a lot of winning opportunities. A great player, but I wouldn't be too keen at backing him on a short price. Let's and just go to the leaderboard. Good. Just go to the yeah. leaderboard. Zander Schoffele, yeah. uh, minus 17, uh, 17 under par. Wyndham Clark, 16 under par. 16. Brian Harmon, 15 yeah. under par. We've got Maverick McNeely and Matt Fitzpatrick at uh, minus 13. And then uh, you've got Figala, uh, the likes of Scotty Scheffler, Sam Ryder at minus 12. Probably be hard to look beyond that, you would say. Um, yeah, these, these tee off. I'm getting really mixed up with the timings because I think America moved their clocks last week. But um, I do believe in roughly about an hour's time. I, I think, think so, yeah. Final yeah. tee off time. So let's start with let's start with a, a match better that I know you've got. As yeah, as I think in the up. final there's two there's two that I'm doing, but I'll quickly do the uh, the bigger price one. That's Nate Lashley, who's going out with Scotty Scheffler. Now you might think this is like insane that I'm taking on the number one in the world. But Scotty Scheffler has got quite a serious neck injury and he would not be playing this last round if this was a standard tournament. Believe me, he would have packed in. Now, the other thing about uh, Scotty Scheffler is he's going to try and win. Um, he's going to go for everything. Uh, and at Sawgrass on the old Sunday pins, that can get very, very dangerous with the water. My other thinking is, if it's not going his way, will he just take it easy and protect that neck? Now, Nate Lashley, top 10 greens in regulation, and he's been uh, top 10 in par fives this week. He's been very, very steady. Now, I don't think he's going to try and win tonight. I don't think he's sat there thinking he's going to win the Players' Championship. Like Scott, he's going to have a go at I think he wants just a good, solid round, try and finish top five or six, get a good payday, get lots of points in, in the bag. And he has been just superb yesterday. He's played very steady all week, but it's superb around the par fives. There's four par fives here. He's not going to be chasing flags. He's going to be just trying to get on in two. Scheffler's going to be going at everything early. And if it doesn't go right, I can see him easy not. I thought plus 400 was way too big there. So that's my angle there. And in the that last... Is on, two, what's it? What's plus 400 on... What's his name again? Nate Lashley to beat Scottish Nate Lashley. Sheffler. Nate Lashley yeah. to beat Scottish Sheffler. So watch out for that one. Um, you've and in got, the final two ball, I think yeah, that Wyndham Clark, it, this for me is a is a pick -em. I think Wyndham Clark can beat Xander Shoffley. I think he's been steadier all week. We know he won the US Open last year. We know he can handle the pressure. And he also hits it a lot further. I see those par fives being key tonight. So I think he is value in the final two ball. Plus 125. We've Plus 125, yeah. Now that, then yeah, in, that looks yeah. a good price. And then we go in the outright. Um, a player that I love, and I think he's got a big, big event in him, and it could well be tonight, is Sahith Thigala. He's not out of this. And if the front two start to uh, set each other off, don't play so well, start getting nervous, this guy will go for it tonight. He's a swashbuckler. He's shot two 67s in the last two rounds. Uh, he's, he's a coming talent. He's already proven to win. This could be his night. I thought a plus... Uh, at 33 to 1 in the outright, that's a third the odds to front two. I think he's going to give us a, a good go for our money here. And he could be this uh, the 6 nil. He could be the big pricer. So we'll get on him at 33s and a steadier bet. He's plus 175 to be in the top five. I think that's outstanding. If you look now, he, he, he is uh, he's, he's sixth. And there's there's people in front of him like Maverick McNeely, Matt Fitzpatrick's had a strange week and he can often struggle in final rounds on a PGA Tour. Sam Ryder, similar. I think this that, that is superb value. So plus 175 for top five, 33 to one, third the odds, two places in the outright. So if we're going to get somebody coming out of that four, five, six shots back, I think he's the guy that can do it. He's already been cut into 28 to one with Bet Rivers. Uh, as we're actually live on air. So someone's listening, Simon. Sahith Figala. So if he actually yeah. finished second on the each way terms there, you're effectively getting ne nearly you are nine or ten to one winner. Um, uh, but yeah, the top six looks a good price as well. He's, he might be the one. There's always someone, isn't they, on a leader yeah, any somebody. tournament, really. Yeah, it yeah. comes deep on the day. And uh, I mean, I've looked at the weather conditions for TPC Sawgrass. It looks like it's going to be a decent day for the boys. Yeah. down there in florida uh, perfect golfing conditions really um so 
I mean, what, what sort of? I mean, I noticed the score is quite low here, isn't it? Really for golf. I mean, we we might we might get a winner around minus twenty, possibly, oh, yeah, yeah. or certainly the late teens. Anyway, I mean, has it been playing a bit easier this year? Would you say? Yeah, it's been very wet, and of course, you think that when the ball stops, these guys are just so good they just fly at flags. But you know, the pressure of the final few groups in this event is only matched four more times a week in the majors. This is a serious showtime that everyone wants to win. And uh, they're all going to be nervous. And, of course, then you start putting your more tense. It might not be the low-scoring affair, we think, more about the nerves and the player's ability. Uh, but somebody will come out of that pack. And uh, he, this guy has, has got great round four stats. He's got great confidence in himself. And uh, he's one of the people, like I say, he's a swashbuckler player. He will, he'll be like Scotty Scheffler going out there to win this. A lot of the guys, they just try and finish top 10. And if the opportunity to win comes, great. But their mindset is second is, not, is nothing. Is that's your, The ice cream man's just come outside on my street, Simon, if you're oh. hearing a noise in the background. Um, mm. I was going to say, why is he out here in Yorkshire in the middle of... Um, March, but actually, it's not too bad out there. Dave. You might get a bit of business. Um, I still but... don't think it's a good business model. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But um, obviously, I can't get out there today, so he's he's losing a customer there, isn't he? But uh, oh yeah, I just want to ask Brian Harmon, Open winner, of course, major yeah, winner. Yeah. I mean, plus five hundred with Bet Rivers. I'm sure some might look at him and think, hmm, shall I just get on him because he's won a big tournament last year could he go under the radar will it suit him today well he's that small he could go under anything steve to be honest <laughs> he uh he, he looks he like is, ricky ponting the cricketer he does yeah and ricky ponting of course the great australian cricketer was actually at the open last year so he was getting stopped saying can i have your autograph brian Harmon?" who was getting because <laughs> people heard ricky ponting was there Harman was getting stopped being asked for his. It was one of the most weird doppelganger moments ever. Um, yeah, I just think his price is about right. Uh, you know, yeah. he, he is, obviously, mm. he's proven under pressure. He doesn't hit the ball very far, which is why these sort of tournaments like the Open, uh, where accuracy and here, he can compete against the monster hitters. So he won't, he won't bottle it. It's... It's just whether his price has been found in the market. Because if yeah. he wasn't coming here as open champion, it'd be eight to one, wouldn't he? Yeah, of course he would. He'd be bigger. I think. But I suppose yeah. when you have won a big tournament, it does give you a bit more respect. So uh, some interesting plays there for you, Simon. Tagala each way. And also in the top six market, we've got like Wyndham Clark to beat Scotty, not Scotty Schefter, Xander Shoffley. And then we're taking on Scotty Schefter in his two balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure so you get the names right when you're writing them yeah, down, folks. Yeah, that's those bets will be. You know, you want to get on them now uh, because yeah, I think the yeah, um, you know, certainly within the next 45 minutes they're going to be off and running there. So, uh, well, whilst we're talking golf, um, we're about a month away from the Masters in Augusta, less than a month away, I think, actually, in fact. And um, well, where, where's the value, Simon? Because I mean, actually, I heard a rumor that there might be potentially even some exclusive Instagram post on the app because we win account from uh, about the US Masters uh, still under negotiations of course. Uh, but, negotiations um, are taking place. We shall That's see but uh, we'll see, yeah. I mean we talk, I mean Brian Harmon I'm trying to find his odds actually now for the for the Masters, I can't find them. He, he's lower down than I thought he would. Oh there he's 80 to 1 Brian Harmon to win the US Masters um, but Scotty Scheffler's the favourite plus 550 clear favourite as well. Because Rory McIlroy is plus nine hundred and John Rahm is plus ten, uh, play, sorry ten to one. Where would your money be right now, a month from the Masters? Well, what's happened recently in golf shows you the uh, the difficulty and danger in anti-post punting. There was a huge gamble at the end of the season last year on Victor Hovland, who was hitting some of the who just won the FedEx Cup. He was in sensational form. He was cut for the Masters to nearly half of the price he'd been. And, you know, I, I said to you on this first show, he's, mm. he's the number one golfer in the moment, uh, at the moment. Then he ch completely has changed his swing for some bizarre reason and looks, I mean, I wouldn't back him at anything less than 100 to 1, the Masters way he's played this week. So it's so odd. We now also, as well, Scotty Scheffler, 
depending on how bad this injury is, you've got to say, will we see him again before the Masters? Um, yeah. He's got such an athletic swing that he's the last guy you want to be having a neck injury. But I'm trying to find. I had a look, and I think there is a smidgen of value on a player who's been placed in the top three in the Masters, who's become a regular winner, who's a bit of a, a lane time, but he's coming right again. He's proven at Augusta. I think all his stats are going in the right direction. And I think he may win or nearly win before the big week. And if he does, his price will, you know, come down the third. And who's and that's that? that's Tony Fee now. Available oh, Big Tony. One with that big, really. big T, yeah. Uh, I think that's – he's come, just started to be forgotten. And one of my great theories, of course, is the old good player gone bad, where you get a brilliant player who's out of form. That's when you've got to believe in them because they will come back. And uh, he went out the year Tiger Woods won, the final year. Of course, Finau went out in the last group with him. Um, he is proven round there. Hits it miles. Very underrated mm. short game. And uh, about to hit form, top form. So, great. 40 to 1. Victor Holt. Victor yeah. 33 to 1 now. 33 to 1 now with Bet Rivers. So, uh, money already it's coming in for Victor. It's world number one. It is bizarre. It's, it's incredible. Victor Hovland is 16 to 1, by the way, if you fancy him. It doesn't sound like you'd want to be putting Monopoly money on him right now. Um, a name that interests me is because, of course, the the lift players, some of the lift players will be in this tournament. Brooks oh, yeah. Kepta will be a popular bet. But Bryson DeChambeau, 33 to 1, once said that the, uh, I think, Augusta is a par 67 for him, effectively. Yeah. Um, since then, it's, it's often bit him on the ass a bit. But yeah. I mean, could he run a? Because he's got a lot of power, hasn't he? And you need a lot of power around Augusta. Would would who, who would tempt you out of the live boys if you had to have a nibble with one of them? I think Joachim Nyman. He's playing fantastic. Uh, I mean, I've I've been a Bryson DeChambeau fan, but also I've uh, done my dough on him in the Masters before and been widely ridiculed because people say his short game isn't good enough. I'm not so sure that that side of his game hasn't improved, actually, since he's gone to live. Um, of course, the, the top two from last year, Brooks and John Rahm, are now on the live tour. you got Dustin Johnson, a former winner there. So they're going to bring a squad here, and it really is going to be a test for the form of their tour, isn't it? It's going to be a, a chance for us to see. They haven't They'll always it. Like, produced it, yeah. But Brooks Kepka looks like he's... See, Brooks Kepka cares just about these four big weeks. Uh, you know, even though he gets the money from Liv, he will be coming to August to try and get another green jacket. I'm not sure like DJ or some of the other ones, we've seen some of their stats fall off, but Nyman is playing the best golf of his career. And I've always thought he's got a, a, the game for that. So he would interest me, Steve. 25 to 1. And Bet Rivers, by the way, do go 1 to 5 places in the uh, Masters outright market at quarter of the odds. So that's, that's well worth considering. I think it's pretty generous, actually, five places. Um, for the massive small stage. field, yeah, yeah. So that's you know that that's well worth looking at. So anyway, keep your eye out for some more content on um, the Masters in the next few weeks on uh, because we win. We'll keep you updated there. Um, just looking at these matches, sixty-two minutes gone now. There's still no more goal in the Liverpool game, as we said. You know, it wasn't a goal line to get stuck into. Anana just made a very good save, though. Liverpool have probably looked more. Uh, ominous here. Still uh, 1-0 to Villarreal. There's been chances in that game. It's going to be one of those, I think I'll look back at the end of it and I'm like, what? how's it actually gone under? And it really comes down to a lot of missed chances. Uh, looks like my team leads are going to be Millwall. Leeds have gone 2-0. 2-0 uh, yeah. to Leeds against Millwall. Incredible championship race. Leicester are under pressure yeah. suddenly. 15 points clear. And yeah. uh, now Leeds will go top of the table, I think, on goal. It, Leicester do have a goal game in hand because they played today in the FA Cup. How mental was the, the FA Cup this weekend, Simon? There's been some crazy well, scores. The Wolves game, the Leicester game. The Chelsea. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just quickly on the subject of Leicester. For a team that's that far clear... To lose it all. All right, you know, the manager will say to them every day, you know, imagine at the start mm. of the year we're taking this position, they'll be getting all that, what they, every day. However, every time they go to sleep at night, you've got to be playing on the whole club's mind and that they have blown that. I I, I don't know. I, I think your boys might. You've got the momentum, haven't you, now? Well, the year that we did go up 
um, under Bielsa. I think we were 12 clear at one point, and then we had a bit of a blip. And we ended with like three or four clear. And I tell you what, it was nervous. Um, got really nervous. So I dread to think what it's like when you've had a 15 point gap. And now, you know, Ipswich's form has been magnificent apart from last week. Leeds have been unbelievable. Southampton have had a great 2024. Yeah. That that's the game that was meant to be the game this weekend, Leicester Southampton. Um, but of course, you know, that's now been rescheduled, I think, for yeah. the third last game. Southampton play Leeds and Leicester in, in two of the last three this season so I don't know if it if it does get to the wire it could get close I don't know there's a long way to go Simon um but yeah it's it just seems that loads of these teams are just not dropping points at all but I've seen loads of people have cashed a lot of money on Ipswich um this season um uh, so uh well know. the championship is so much more an attritional uh mentally fatiguing league than the premier because the players are out like Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, and you can be in form, and you just see clubs come coming in and out of it more than mm. you do maybe in the Premier League because it's so attritional. The injuries and the fatigue towards the end, and but Leicester looked superb in in spells today, didn't they? Probably a good distraction for them to get in the cup. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's a good time for them to get knocked out though. Now, yeah. I've got to be oh, honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, whether or not that will cost them. I, I, Leicester, look, Leicester have got a really good squad. They've got a good manager and I think they've got it in them to rebound. But this is not what they wanted. At this stage, they wanted to be in party mode, cruise control oh, yeah. mode, where they're just winning at home and drawing away if they need to, just get over the line. They didn't want this, where two of the, well, all three teams below them have had a great 2024. Um, it's crazy. I mean, I, I think Jamie Carragher said it on Monday Night Football the other week, that it feels like three championship clubs are in the Premier League this season and three Premier League clubs are in the championship. Yeah, yeah, perfect. But really, it's four, isn't it? With the way it's which it yeah. played, it's four. So, yeah, yeah let's, let's see how that race goes. Liverpool have definitely looked dangerous on the on the counter-attack here, Simon. You know, um, if there's another goal, I fancy them, but United have got to push. At some stage, it might be... Well, they've got no the option. Yeah. You got to time it well within runnings, but over the over three point five goal line when it becomes viable would interest me in this game. Yeah, um, not going to lie, um, I'm just looking at the Spanish game. I think there's another goal in this game. Villarreal against Valencia plus one forty eight for over one and a half. There's only ten minutes left that they usually add about five, at least six minutes in Spain. So there's probably right. about fifteen minutes left to get a goal. It's going to be one of that. I know what's going to happen. It's going to end with two goals in it. Just to annoy me. Um, we've got my great Marseille guys. No, still one nil. Um, the Marseille, I've not actually I've been focusing on some of the games, but Marseille still one nil to Ren at Ren, half time. Yeah, still one nil, Ren, yeah. Um, this time, tight one. Marseille, this wouldn't, time. I mean, they've got to go for it as well. Over yeah. 2.5 goals at minus 112. In that it's game, seven that to be. the eighth, isn't it? The uh, Ren, big game, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a big game because both would want to be in the top four, yeah, and they still might get in the top four because. Loads of teams above are dropping points. As it's really close. behind PSG, it's really close. We'll talk a bit about the PSG game later, but um, we're now heading into an international and Atletico Barca as well. But we're heading into an international break now, Simon. Which I mean, I, in a way, I'm quite a bit relieved because it's been a really mad period for soccer betting yeah. since Christmas, really, or certainly since the end of January. And this is the I always feel this is a crucial period for not just the teams and the players and the managers, but also for us bettors who are specialising yeah, in yeah. soccer. Because you can actually, it's the one time of year you can look at, I look at my results, I look at some teams, look at some matches going ahead, outrights as well. And I'm sure in various different sports that you've been involved in down the years, there's been periods of like, you know, get a two week break or even a month break. What do you use those breaks for personally? Do you, are you one of those? who you know, you'll get out on the golf course, completely recharge, say a few days off, not even thinking about it, or are you back knuckling down, trying to get an edge all the time? Uh, well, unless you've got a massive interest in international football, I think in the long term, you're far better to do what you say, take some time, recharge, and then mm. have a prop, use that time to, because we, we're coming up for, for air a little bit, aren't we, after a mad spell, and we know that as soon as this international breaks over, it's going to be an even madder spell till the end of the year, the end of the season, rather. So use that time to start looking at the run-ins, start looking at 
where your positions are, where you might need to alter things, where you might need to press up. And like I say, unless and there are people who who, who love betting on uh, international football, love betting on friendlies. I've never been uh, of that persuasion myself. I think that the big players are what's to come when they all get back, and you just hope that everyone gets back in one piece. So yeah, get some time, get the old whiteboard out, see exactly where you are, and uh, switch things off for a while. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very unique international break, actually, because there is going to be a show we're actually recording tomorrow. Me, Dan Roebuck and Ruri Barlow are on. And we're going to be fo- focusing on the six uh, important qualifying games for the Euros. But apart from that, it's just friendlies. And to be honest, I, apart from those six games, I won't be looking too much and uh, much else. Um, I will be trying to use this sort of two-week break to refresh a bit. Look look back at maybe where I've been going right and been going wrong in the last few months. And then after you've assessed yourself, you can look ahead. Because I do think in this business, you have got to... I mean, we use. I don't like to use the word words like mental health and stuff because I think it can be a bit of a cop-out at times. But I think a better way of saying it is just refreshing yourself. Like um, your overall health, if you know what I mean. Because you've got to be... It's like a horse, isn't it? You can't overrun the horse um, because you've got to get them sort of trained perfectly for the the feature race if you know what i mean Simon. the big day yeah well you have got to spend more time on where you're going wrong i think than sometimes where you're going right so it's easy to focus on things we're getting right isn't it um but you know if you get that break and there's somewhere where you're really out of line where you've had like where you're mystified that why am i reading this league this way or why why do i think this team is better than the results it's produced. I think you've got a spell there, haven't you, to actually get stuck into it and do a bit of a deeper dive. It might be that you weren't right all along, that that it's just a blip in form. But when things are going thick and fast, I know from other sports, certainly golf with the majors, I always like the week before to just rein everything back and keep an eye on who's playing. But I won't bet heavily in the week before a major because I want to be concentrating on what's going on in the in the upcoming Masters and things like that. Now, that can be altered by the people playing the week before. Uh, but, you know, I'd rather spend more time on what's really important, the biggest stuff, than stretch yourself too far. Because if you stretch yourself too far in this game, it comes back to bite you. Brian says uh, for his hot dog this week, he's got fine old Roman sporting. Fine old one, I know that. I don't know what happened in the Roma game or the sporting game. Maybe they're to come, but good luck, Brian. The hot dog, that that I've been really poor. For those who have been following my hot dog for this season, it's, it's still in profit by about five, six units, but it has gone cold for me in the last. I think I've lost, this will be my fourth loss now in a row with the hot dog. Needed over 3.25 in this Villarreal game. So that's gone. There's only three minutes to go. But um, yeah, that's the, my target. I mean, it's not easy to find a winner at plus 180 or more, you know, and it's in soccer. But, um, yeah, I'll be desperate to try and get that hot dog back. But I've had a much better week in terms of overall betting. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to be uh, too despondent about that, Simon. But uh, You don't yeah, want it colder in... than an ice cream in Yorkshire in March, do you? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how cold it's gone. Um, <laughs> yeah, mate, yeah. But, um, yeah, outright, then, because, you know, we've, we've got to touch on this because um, I always like to grill you a bit with the, certainly the Everton situation in the Premier League. And, I mean, one thing we've got to mention about the Premier League, tomorrow there's expected to be an announcement. It's been written around all the media outlets and everything. Nottingham Forest, uh, the hearing about their financial uh, breaches. Um, Everton are under investigation as well. But, Permanently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't know. Look, we, we, we can theorise a lot of things about, you know, could Forest get yeah. no points? They might have got, no, if they do, how many? Could be anything. Um, is it one of them? Because are, are prices factored in on the out right now? Are the bookies actually, you know, factoring it in potentially? Well, do you think? I, I see. I don't know. I go with what I said to you yesterday. What Nigel has said on one of the other shows about the Premier League that it's a market you're going to have to be very, very wary about because, mm. in a sense, you're a little bit blindfolded because I think we all know now who we think are the poorest three teams. But most years, that's all we're looking for. In this relegation betting market, we've got some other variables randomly thrown in. Points off, a couple back, given back, 
which made suddenly Everton seem this great team again as they shot back up the table uh, in the middle of a nine-match losing streak um, or non-winning streak. Um, I don't like the I don't like the idea of being heavy on someone like Luton to go down. Who I've finally given up the ghost. I think that was the a little nail in their coffin yesterday getting beat. Um, but well, they drew yesterday, didn't they? Uh, sorry, not winning. You I mean the midweek one that. where they were when they were three yeah. 0 Oh, yeah. yeah, when they were when yeah. they didn't win. Sorry, yeah, I didn't explain that clearly. But I, um, what I wouldn't like to do is kind of wake up to the headline that Forest in eight point deduction shock, and suddenly you've got you know a, a bet that you've played right on the on the pitch, as it were, is dragged off you off. So I'm going to be so, look. If you want to bet on the Premier League, look at the top of the market. You've got three great teams going at it. As far as we know, they're not in any trouble. One of them's going to win, and you'll either win or you'll lose. But at the bottom end of the market, you've got it could be out of your hands. And then there could be appeals as well, couldn't they? Like whatever's announced tomorrow might not be the final outcome, for example. And uh, we might even get something in, decided in the courts over after the final game of the season. So it's a crazy. See, what one thing I do know though, Simon, there's some really, really poor teams in that bottom half of the yeah, Premier League. I watched two of them yesterday. I mean, yeah, Burnley, you had an eye on Burnley, didn't you? And they actually won a game yeah. for once. Yeah, the goalkeeper yeah. switch might have been a good, good move from company. Je Trafford's been awful, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I heard Murich had a decent game. But Brentford, I think there's quite a lot of teams down there. You can just fade at the minute because well, unless they're well, playing each other. That. You used a phrase earlier, on the beach. Well, I think Brentford have, have moved off the beach and gone into the sea. I mean, <laughs> they were yesterday... Honestly, they made Sheffield United's performance against Arsenal look like it was like Real Madrid. They were dreadful. I don't think they put more than two passes together in the first half. I text you and said, they've got no chance playing like this. And then, of course, we talked about, could the manager be leaving? And I said to you, if the players think the manager's leaving and that they've got enough points already, the motivation yesterday just wasn't there at all. And, and Burnley took advantage. But it was a dreadful performance. It really was. They've got Man United next, Brentford have, uh, on the 30th of March. They beat them, was it 4-0 last season, on the season opener, I think. Uh, and then they've got the big game against Brighton, which is a huge fixture because both the owners hate each other, Benham and Bloom. It's a battle of the yeah. syndicates, isn't it? Um, yeah. So that that's a much spicier game than you think. And then they've got Villa away. So, yeah, I'm already looking at Brentford, Sheffield United on the 13th of April as potentially a must-win for them because they just look... I mean, they've got a captain who's going to leave the club. They've effectively yeah. got a mercenary captain in Ivan Tony, haven't they? So yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a straight. I think that's a strange, strange decision from Thomas Frank. But well, um, well who, who looks like he's he's uh, maybe been distracted by uh, other offers or yeah, he will be in demand. Yeah, he's done he well at Brentford, but it just it does kind of feel like his cycle there might be. At an it end in the be. summer. Yeah. Um, I would be looking fact, to get against them every week. He's twenty-five to one to be the next manager out. By the way, oh, that's not, wouldn't. That's not a bad play. That's not a guarantee that he survives. He stays until the end of the season if if these results keep being quite poor. Um, well, in that market, Steve, I can tell you, I can share with people that within Everton there is certainly a a growing faction, if you like, and it is growing. But think maybe Deitch is not the man to take the club forward. Right. Um, now, I'm not saying get on him to be the next out. I'm just saying when we get to those markets about who might be able to manage on the first day of the season, I think his position is more precarious than it was six weeks ago. Well, I'm we've sure said it that. before, but long term, Sean Deitch is just not a manager for you because he, he's, he's not going to progress the team. Um, from anything but a relegation battle, and he might keep you up, but long term, just not sure about this. Phil, Philly guy says they have got to do something about VAR. Steve West Ham gets screwed again. Seven minute review. There was about three three disallowed goals today, I think, in the West Ham game. And uh, I, I didn't see it, but I thought I think the the goal that was disallowed in injury time was apparently really harsh. But yeah, look, VAR is yeah, it doesn't. I don't like it. I've said it many times before much rather watch the championship games because it's not involved and uh, totally agree with you, Phil. Uh, Kovac out of Wolfsburg just announced as Byron. I I'm not really been following them too much, actually. They've not been in, a, in amazing form, though. So, uh, that, then. 
yeah, former Bayern manager, of course. Um, so that's a big, big news there today. It looks like Villarreal are going to win one nil. This is a rarity. Like them keeping a clean sheet is seriously rare. Like this doesn't happen that often. Not against a decent team, anyway. I can't believe I've been done in this game, Simon. Um, well, what, uh, it is a sort of dreamland scenario, and, and and eventually odds might come up for this scenario. Um, Pochettino was was roundly jeered by his own uh, Chelsea fans who were singing, "You don't know what you're doing." Now, usually when that starts and it's two thirds in the stadium, do you? Oh yeah, live on TV about a substitution he made, a substitution that he made that actually came good. So he can rightly feel a bit smug about that. But once that starts, I think there's only one way for a lot of managers. And that's uh, right. OK, then see you later. Now, it, you know, it's a dream scenario, but I would have a few a few books on it if possible. Now, what if he were to leave there? And of course, Deitch to leave Everton could... A big team still in the Premier League with a brand new stadium. Could we tempt him, Steve? What would the price be on that? Well, Pochettino would be a, a really good fit for Everton. Oh, fantastic. It'd be just what Everton would want. Um, would he you know, take the job? Well, he would. Yeah, maybe. I mean, obviously, it would. You'd, you'd need to be still in the Premier League. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. would be an assurance that he would need. But, yeah, look, I think, I think there's going to be a hell of a lot of managers on the move this summer. We already know there's a lot anyway. Mm. I think there's going to be betting. Mar- I mean, for those who don't who don't bet on the summer leagues, you know, you're going to be able to bet on these manager and player oh, markets yeah, it's going to be, specials. I mean, you're not going to be without a show a bet. about that every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been yeah, sacked it's, while it's we're on gonna there. Be, it's going to be yeah. absurd. It's going to be absolutely absurd. But we do have, of course, some international tournaments uh, coming up this summer. We've got the Copa America, which is going to be. Don't know whether we're going to be covering it or not, but certainly the Euro 2024 we'll be doing a piece of. And uh, you know, I'm sure we'll be on about it this week, me, Dan, and Rory Barlow. But if you had to have a, you know, if I if was to give you a free ten dollar bet right now, Simon, on an outright for Euro 2024, England at plus three fifty, France at plus three fifty, Germany plus six fifty, Spain and Portugal plus seven hundred. Someone outside of them that you would Portugal, knowing you. You, you, I split. If you remember the first time I was on, I split two small bets, and then uh, the the Belgians as well. If you remember, Belgium that, plus fourteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. So I'm surprised it didn't start a major plunge on both countries, but the market remained unaltered by my view. But yeah, the Portuguese. I mean, because uh, no one's talking. No one's well. talking about the. No one's talking no, about Euro 2024 because even in this international break, there won't be. Because everyone's thinking about who's going to win the big domestic yeah. competitions, who's going to win Champions League. But we're not that far away now from no, the not. Euro tournament. So, yeah, it's going to be really... I mean, I, the minute I, I've said it all along, the best squads, are, without doubt, England and France. Um, but France are managed by a better proven head coach. Oh, different class. So, if you have to... Actually, from a betting point of view, France. But... I do love England squad. I do love England squad, and I love um, the form. But Steve, one there, thing you always say is that this elite level is about the coaches and the strategies. Now you've drummed that into me, and because of that, I just can't be having England because I don't think the guy's up to it. So I'm listening yeah. to you about that mm. stat, and I'm against Southgate. I know. I mean, it's just the thing is right though. Just say England had a semi final or a final against. You know, a Spain or you know, say Italy, Portugal. You know, can that coaching differential will it be as big? Like, you know what I mean? And against France, and say, I don't think it can be the final actually. And well, it could be, it depends on where you finish in your group. You know, you would definitely have to back France because, but because they've got the squad quality. But the other, t- the other nations don't have the luxury that those two teams have in depth. No, so, true. that's a fair point. But I know it's, it's, look, Southgate is obviously for anyone wanting to back England, Southgate is the biggest concern, no doubt about it, for England battles and England fans. So it's one of those where we just hope that he has learned his lessons. But well, 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 Klopp, I mean, I'm an Everton fan, it is through gritted teeth. Klopp last week, let's talk about the brilliant managers. Half time against mm-hmm. Man City, he switches the formation, he changes it all up. I've never seen Man City run ragged like they were in that second half last week. 
Mm. Right now, when does Southgate ever pull a trick like that in the last 25, 30 minutes of a game? Can you name me one occasion he has to? And, and this is about betting. So you've got to bear that in mind that not, you, don't, you don't win finals easy. You win finals by here and there and little moments. And I just don't think this guy's got a master stroke in him if you give him a million darts to fire. <laughs> You get the impression I don't like him, are you? Um, I am. I, I'm actually. I'm going with my heart here, aren't I? I'm not going with my head thinking about England. You, well, you I'm, are I'm right, Simon. Your advice. Yeah, you are right, Simon. Yeah, like we'll have this. We'll have uh, at some point there'll be an outright show, and you're totally spot on. I need. I need to. You got to think clearly. This is why I have a problem sometimes betting on teams that I have an affiliation to. Yeah, because um, you you bet on what you want to happen, don't mm, you? Rather than you do. What Evidence yeah. shows us that he comes up short. Yeah, so I look. So I suppose in terms of free logic, if I had a free ten dollar bet, it would go on France just based on that. But I like yeah. the angle of a bit of. There's always an out shot that does well. And, in this you know, tournament, this tournament has yeah. got a record of, of bigger prices <laughs> uh, being either winning. Remember the Greeks at fifties? Everybody thought they were just come to make the numbers up, uh, and um, and people get into the finals for whatever reason. Uh, rather than World Cups do. So that you've always got a chance in this. I say, do keep your eye out for the international preview show with myself, Rory Barlow, Dan Roebuck coming up. It's hopefully come out on Monday evening or even or Tuesday morning. And we've got another show after that as well to discuss the finalists, whoever goes through from those qualifiers. We've got the likes of Luxembourg, Kazakhstan, some <laughs> some really interesting nations. All the big, um, all the big teams. Yeah, all the big guns out. There's also really some, in, some... There are some big friendlies, actually. Quite how seriously the nations will take them, I don't know. Um, let's wait and see, but do check out that. And, yeah, I said I'd love a look at some games this evening. And Marseille... Not Marseille. PSG are in action, away against Montpellier. Now, if you want some good analysis on this, then do check out the European preview show. It's James Easton's big two-unit play of the week is on this match. Right. And I will say now that he doesn't. He's siding with the with the jolly with the favourite um, PSG minus one on the Asian handicap. Man United have equalised. Anthony, you would not believe this. This I this game you, know, went I, over. you know how I said the Villarreal the clean sheet. The Villarreal yeah. clean sheet is rare. This is even yeah. rarer. Anthony scoring a goal. Anthony hitting yeah. the target is rare yeah. in itself. Yeah. But he has well, equalised with four minutes to go. Four minutes to go, folks. Mm. Four minutes to go, and we pull another one out of the Four fire. Minutes. We might get that tie. Um, we might get that tie indeed. So, uh, yeah, PSG, PSG minus one Asian handicap is what James likes. And uh, I've seen a lot of people liking the goals here as well, over two and a half, like as a banker, as a parlay piece, or, or PSG winning over two and a half, that sort of thing. I think it's an intriguing match because the problem with PSG is it's... <laughs> I mean, you look at the, the league table now. They don't have to be anything remarkable just to win the league, because they can they yeah. can drop points whenever they want. Because no one below puts enough pressure on them ever. I mean, there's seven clear, um, sorry, nine clear, with a game in hand. Brest drew today. Monaco drew. Lille drew. I mean, it's it, over. It's isn't it? It annoys me every year because no one, as soon as anyone actually puts a significant challenge down to them, like Lille did two or three years ago, they won the league. Yeah. So. They can. That's always concerns me with PSG. Now they don't. They don't really. They don't really have to win, but they might want to make a statement here. They've always had a bit of a bee in their bonnet over Montpellier. Montpellier won the French league in about the. You might remember it, 2011, 12. I think it was, and it was a bit like a Leicester City story, actually. Uh, I think, I think I just 100... left college. I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> 150 to 1, I think they were. Giroud was the top scorer that year. I got on him on a big price, about 33s, I think. Um, anyway, since then, they've always had a bit of a bee in their bonnet over Montpellier, so they do like to give it large to them. And um, the recent head-to-head -head is very much in PSG's favour. So I would agree with James Easton. Who, who wouldn't agree with James Easton? To be honest, yeah. he's a proven one of the best out there, one of the best in the business, as we say. And, um, you know, you've got to think PSG probably get the job done. The Spanish game is another interesting I, one, I've Simon. I'm playing this. I'm on Atletico tonight, folks. Did you see much of them? The midweek, they beat uh, Inter Milan in the midweek. They're such a... Oh, I would hate you to You don't like the way team. they play, do you? When, mm, no, but you've got to begrudgingly respect it. No oh, doubt about it. Yeah. I think this is a perfect game at the perfect time for them. Because and I think they know that they've got to win this, haven't they, tonight? 
Oh yeah, I mean, Bill Bow put the pressure on them last night in the race to the top four. Exactly. Yeah. Barcelona uh, uh, probably they need to win as well, so it might be more. Do, open yeah, than but I just think they'll rough them, rough them up tonight. Atletico, don't you? <laughs> it isn't a great watch, I must admit. If you watch Real Madrid one night, switch over there on. It is. It mm. does go down a notch, but they're very effective at what they do, aren't they? They are, and 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 look, the, 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 I actually think Atletico Madrid now are capable of winning matches in different ways because in the past they could only really win one nil a lot tight games but the, the, he has definitely tried to make them since the world cup break last year in qatar more offensive minded so that they can win some shootouts yeah. now yeah yeah um yeah. there is better offensive the, policy the forward players to do it haven't they when they need do you to like them on the money line then players. on the money line to win yeah yeah straight Just on the money line. About right, plus, yeah. plus 220 i think around yeah. that sort of mark um after last night's results Girona lost against Etafe and uh, Real Madrid thrashed off sooner. I think this might be a more open game than you think. I, I I said on the European preview show, I quite like the under, but I would now not bet on the under. I think it's a better way yeah. of saying it. I wouldn't, wouldn't bet the over because the over goal line's at 2.753. But it, <sighs> Barcelona can't accept a draw here. They just can't. If they want to win I the league... I think it might be 1 0. Could be, yeah, because yeah. at the end of the day, it don't mean they're going to score. Yeah. yeah, but if it yeah. was if it was one all though, with ten minutes to go, I think both go for it. Oh god, yeah, yeah. Well, Atletico, I, I honestly think they have to win. It's one of the reasons I, re I really fancy him tonight because I just I don't think he can sneak sneak a one all and say never mind, it's Barca. I think they've got to try and uh, go for it. I'll tell you who is going for it. Manchester United are really going for it here. I wish in, they were. Uh, in there's three minutes left of stoppage time, they're going for the cross coming on the right hand side. My watch is going in. very slow here now. <laughs> it's cleared away. I, I'm still in shock. I'm actually amazed I didn't like have a heart attack or something because Anthony's scoring. Like, he's yeah. been one of the worst players of the whole season, hasn't he? For them. Oh, shocking. Um, I mean, <laughs> we, we talked, we were joking off air about uh Raheem Sterling earlier. Oh, yeah. I mean, who's had the better season league, out of them man, two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that free kick, that free kick landed in ah. the old back garden, didn't it? In no, neighbours, he went oh, he sailed over me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, so... uh, I just on a Man United, just very quickly, yeah, watching United, that first yeah. half and watching the way they've rallied against, let's be honest, and I say every time I say it to a gritty team, uh, a, a, a brilliant Liverpool side. If you were a fan, and there would be many watching this on TV there, wouldn't you turn to the person next to you and say, where's this effort been all year? Well, Because it has been about effort and tenacity, this. They are very inconsistent, though, aren't they? Um, I feel like I'm not saying they play when they want to play, but it's very random when they when they perform. No you can't do that it. at a club like that, can you? you they're a horrible, they're a horrible team to bet on. But I, yeah. like in terms of pre-game, how can you bet on them pre-game? Because you you're trying to predict what they don't know themselves, right? Well, quite. I mean, it's, this. It's such a big, big game for them, isn't it? That if they weren't up, they've got to, they've got to get through to the semi-finals here. They really yeah. do need to. Oh, it's off the line! It's off the line. Please, uh, for, uh, it's still too big. It's all Man United here, absolutely all yeah. over Liverpool. As we, this is a bit like the Carling Cup final, where Liverpool were really under the ropes before extra time. Then Klopp changed it up, and they were brilliant in extra time. That so, may have been. Yeah, we just said about how we yeah. fix these things. Yeah. If it goes to go extra time, watch him out. He'll fix, fix you it. Might, and he, maybe they, they might, might be, be the play team. now. Byron Murrell agrees with you about Atletico Madrid, by the way. Thank you, on Byron. The, uh, on, the, on the comments here. But, uh, yeah, anyway, well, I want to thank everyone who's been on the reaction shows this, this whole month, really. We've had a great run. Um, Neil's been on, you've been on, Nigel. It's been uh, good stuff. Uh, appreciate all the comments, anything like that. And... Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if we're having one next Sunday because we're we're in the middle of the international break. Mm. So we might have our own break from the reaction show. Uh, that will be more than likely to happen. But uh, after that, there's a big, massive run in. We've got Ars uh, Man City Arsenal after the international yeah. break. So we're straight back with that. And then heading down, or obviously down the stretch as well, Simon. But uh, you're looking really well with uh, what is that lovely uh, shirt you've got on there? Oh, I, I don't want this to be about my wardrobe, Steve. Thank you for saying that. You, you got the email then. Yeah, well, I always think, particularly with cardigans, if you ask to, have to ask how much they were, then really not for you, you know. But I can tell you've had a good Cheltenham week wearing that. 
right? Well, it, I, I told Nigel when he saw me in it, I said, this is a limited edition. He said, it's probably so limited. You would not believe the miss that Rashford's just had. Oh, right, now that he was... He should have scored this. Sterling would have scored that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry for yeah. interrupting you. No, so no, it's fine. It, 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 I said it's a limited edition. He said probably limited to one because nobody else would be stupid enough to buy it, which I thought was a tad <laughs> cruel, Steve. Oh, goodness <laughs> me. Uh, but we can't deny that you certainly make an effort to come well, best dressed on, on this reaction. It sure so. deserves it, in my view. But we appreciate your time, as always, sir, Pleasure, and mate. your insights and nuggets uh, into the game. We've got the tie. It's ended 2 all. Desmond is in the house. We did it. At the 90 minute well done, mark. everyone We've who got played. That. We did say the tide looked overpriced, didn't we? Plus yeah. 480. Yeah, we did. Oh, we were very clear about and that. And there yeah. it is. Go to extra time. Quick uh, gun to your head here. Who's going to go through? Liverpool. I think Liverpool as well. Yeah. <laughs> An FA Cup winner? FA Cup winner this year? Liverpool. <laughs> oh, please really? I wrong. can't. I can't please not say wrong. Manchester City for me in, in the Cup. But, um, well, they just keep pulling it out of the fire. This I season, don't see they? Chelsea aren't going to win it, are they? I mean, no, they, no even chance. if they draw, they'll even if they get through to the final, they'll probably bottle it. I mean, you wouldn't even back them to beat Coventry, would you? Um, based on I mean, they needed extra time, nearly you know, extra time goal to beat Leeds and Leicester. Um, Coventry, of course, well done to them yesterday. Man City, yeah, yeah, great. Uh, Liverpool or Man United as well. And let's see what I mean, we could get a draw. We could get City Liverpool in the semi final. Who knows? But uh, let's wait and see. Good luck, whatever you're taking the rest of the day and enjoy your international break. We'll be back for more shows during it and the reaction show probably in a couple of weeks' time. But uh, stay safe, take care, and goodbye.